a hottie um, with a far body. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. To the internet's number one fake history podcast, The Lore Boys. I'm your host, Ethan Palmer, here to talk to you guys today about Balder, Freya, and the trickster god of Norse mythology. <gasps> uh, who uh, I've me, never heard of. Uh, with sorry. me, of course, as always, is uh, Mr. Never Heard of Nobody. Peter Donahue. Don't know who mm-hmm. you are. Don't ask. And, and Sir Gasps a lot. James Miller. The poll. It predicted it all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Can you imagine if people changed horoscopes for pol- for polls, and it was just like they <laughs> thought they were predicting the future? <laughs> yeah, but well, that's how democracy works, dude. Why don't they make the weather? Why don't they make the weather a democracy? You're right. We should vote on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty one every day, no questions asked. Uh, yeah. ASMR thought, rain at night. I, thought, I don't okay. want no fucking liberals voting on my weather. Uh, <laughs> The um, thunderstorm was stolen or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> name, name me a single hurricane that's ever worked in the real <laughs> world. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. Jamie, Jamie uh, mentioned that this was a, a viewer request in a way. Uh, this episode actually comes as a result of a poll that was listed on Patreon, patreon.com slash the lore boys. So uh, if you're interested in supporting the show, uh, maybe getting um, you know a, a say in what lore comes up next. We don't do it all the time. We don't necessarily even do it often, but sometimes we, we have done polls before. Uh, we also do stuff like uh, bonus content where today you'll get some uh, some bonus content about God of War and Norse mythology. Like who's that giant eagle in hell, you know? And and uh, a couple a couple other cool little tidbits. So uh, tune in tomorrow if you're interested in joining patreoncom boys. And Peter, I believe, has some names of people who joined just this past week. I do. Uh, speaking of Knights of the Round Table, we have Colin Pendergrass, which is a knight. It's just a fake knight name. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a good um, name coming up. I remember seeing Reg one. Allen or Reg Allen. Thank you very much. Uh, Marks Wallace, who does not look like a bitch. I, I, I think that uh, might be a Pulp Fiction thing. <laughs> Jack Butts is a fantastic oh, yeah. one. Yeah, I liked his name. That was a good name. Yeah. I'll jack your but, butt. Uh, I'm a Jack's butts man, not much of a Jack's tits man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and finally, Blorful McChorf, who I think might have resubbed or something. There's a dual yeah. notification there. Regardless, thank you. Five. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Yeah, does Blorful McGlorf sound familiar, or <laughs> did you just have a weird dream last night as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was real. Uh, that's someone. So this uh this episode is is a part two, technically. Uh regarding god of war 4 lore specifically uh i don't think part one should be required reading for this episode but it'll probably be this episode will probably be better if you know some of the uh stuff that we talked about last time like the dwarves brock and sindri and jormungand the world serpent and some other cool stuff from norse mythology that said this episode contains spoilers for god of war 4 2018 it contains just about the biggest spoiler you can get in that game so if you're not into that run out by god of war <laughs> four uh not ragnarok not the new one by the the second newest one uh beat it and then come back and listen to this episode i got um, it for ten dollars in 2019 they are probably just giving away copies of this game at this time like <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it we're not asking you to break the bank <laughs> uh th- it this may contain spoilers for god of war ragnarok but only as far as the original norse myth would contain spoilers for the the game in doing the research for um these episodes i realized like if you'd known the the norse myth there would have been a lot of like very cool foreshadowing which we'll get into what exactly that is stuff like the mistletoe arrows which are, are significant in norse myth yeah um that said uh the other possible spoilers for god of war uh, ragnarok is of course peter who son of a bitch has been playing the game I finished uh, it, yes I, I almost i almost cut peter out of this episode and almost just like message jamie and be like we got to just do it you and me because i you know we can't really trust peter to not react to certain things a certain way so 
my hope is that by calling him out on air and putting him on blast will really make him not spoil anything I for think, myself specifically. I think um, a couple days ago, Jamie, bless up, got promoted. So we went to our local watering hole and I had the exact same comment. I was just like, I don't know if I can just not react on yeah. webcam to no, give shit think, away because like, like not, you're gonna see my <laughs> eyebrows go up like a one one trillionth of a millimeter yeah. and you're gonna be like oh fuck you got me yeah. well, P- well like pete's pete's either gonna react is just like completely say the main spoiler of the game and be like it's not even a major spoiler he's gonna t- tell you like what happens in the last 15 <laughs> minutes of the game so like it's not even a major spoiler or uh he's just gonna not react at all and then we're gonna know that something happens there or that we're on the nose, I, so. exactly damned if you do I'm, I'm really really between a rock and a hard place here yeah so I normally, when we record, I have a notepad file up over my camera because I don't want to look at myself when we're recording. I want to look at you two. Uh, and oh. I think I think I'm going to uh, put a window on top of a little PD here, on top of a little PD's <laughs> face too. So it's the Jamie I'm, show today. I'm for me, stare, staring into Jamie's eyes this whole this whole episode. <laughs> How many socks do I have under the chair behind me? Three, uh, four. I think Is that three. white. Is that white one a sock? What is that white thing? A receipt. Yeah. Okay. That, in, in my head, I was like, that looks like a receipt that fell out of a grocery bag when you were unloading just in the of... kitchen, meaning it's been kicked down the hallway. Yeah. And around the corner. Yeah. I order food a lot, so it's probably an ordered food receipt. Oh, there even yeah. better. There you go. Yeah. It's Straight a the crooked desk. pizza receipt. That, that's what he got there. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's start talking about uh, God of War and or Norse mythology. Okay. Uh, we're going to begin talking about, wouldn't you know it, the gods. Uh, so we talked, we talked Quick, a little bit. To cover my own ass here. Sorry, mm-hmm. Jamie, you've played God of War, right? I played uh, all but Ragnarok. Yeah. So okay. Good. I just want to make sure game. I can. We can talk about spoilers for the base game too. Just. Oh, just did you around. did you play the PS Vita God of War, Jamie? Hmm? Uh, I, I, Ragnarok? I played all the main <laughs> series. I guess. Ghost of Olympus. <laughs> if we're gonna be uh, picky. Yeah. But, um. And so, yeah, I mean, for, for the, the Ragnarok spoilers, I like I'm, I'm really not looking at Peter because like I'm also very excited because there's some really cool stuff in here and like some cool tinfoil hat lore boys uh, canon theory that I have. Right. Um, and I would love if that I nailed it without it being in Ragnarok yet, you know, uh, yeah. but we, I, I won't know until uh, Peter reacts or I play the game. Well, this is good because I can finally play the game. Now that Pete's done, I can steal the copy and, yeah, exactly. and, and get it done because, yeah, we'll, we'll have already talked about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, the uh, Aesir and the Vanir, we talked about uh, a bit on the last episode. They're two distinct tribes of gods in Norse myth uh, with the warlike Aesir commonly depicted as the ones in charge over the Vanir who are responsible for wealth, fertility, and commerce instead of uh ruling and war um the Aesir you guys know and love include odin his wife frigg tyr uh tyr is the god of war uh and thor the old old german word for thunder okay uh, um you guys probably remember from last week too like odin was also a god of war thor is also a god of war um odin was like specifically the god of war relating to like strategy thor is the god of war relating to like battle and and fighting more specifically what's Tyr. frig do <laughs> frig is so we'll get into frig a little bit because frig by a lot of interpretations is just freya who is actually a vanir and we'll talk about freya uh-huh. in a little bit but you can't say of, freya in front of your parents you have to say yeah, frig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> frig. The, the, the tv edit of god of war they always uh yeah <laughs> they always say frig instead of fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so Tyr was the god of war concerned with the formalities of war. So treaties, justice, uh, binding of oaths, that sort of stuff. In God oh, of War, he's the nerd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. In God of War 4, you dis- as you descend into Tyr's temple, Kratos and his son Atreus remark on how Tyr was considered the most respected by mankind and giants alike. Mimir's head remarks to Atreus while trying to temper the boy's newfound hubris at learning that he's a demigod. You can either serve yourself or put your godhood into the service of others, like Tyr did. A god of war, but one who fought for peace, had a reputation for being heroic and lawful, using his power and knowledge to stop w- stop wars rather than start them. That's Mimir saying <laughs> that to, uh, to Atreus. God oh, of war, one, two, three, except it's Tyr, and you just talk all the gods down. Everything's <laughs> fine. It would be like papers, please. It would be like a, like a, a document simulator. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jamie, do, do me a favor put a pin in that and like like keep it keep it very close okay because we're going to talk about god war one two three compared to compared to tier 
and how okay. you know in the in the throughout the god of war games there's been very few gods that that have shown themselves worthy of of kratos's trust right or like kratos's respect in any kind of sense but as they're as they're kind of talking it's atreus kind of talking about how good tier is and then mimir kind of echoing that as well uh kratos says something along the lines of like no god can be trusted during that right mm. so in the right. game's myth uh in the game's myth Odin grows distrustful of Tyr and his fraternizing with giants instead of stealing the giant's secrets for the Aesir. So Odin had apparently sent Tyr, like, go talk with the giants and steal their secrets and bring them back to us. But Odin thinks that Tyr is working with the giants. Mimir confirms this in the game as likely true uh, and that he did so because he uh, Tyr felt responsible for the suffering Odin had inflicted upon the giants. So he's basically like, hey, this guy is kind of a dick. I'm here to kind of help you guys. Uh, Mimir talks about how the because uh, the gate to Jotunheim is missing in the game, like missing yeah. from Tyr's temple. And Mimir says uh, that only would have been possible with the giants and, and Tyr working together, essentially. Okay. So I love how in the first, in God of War 4, they always talk about how like distrustful and paranoid Odin is. That's why he's got like ghost ravens all over yeah. the place. Everywhere. I like the fact he sends like a spook to narc on the giants and then immediately distrusts his own spy. He's just like, <laughs> well, I taught him everything he knows. I taught him how to lie. <laughs> what, 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 what if he's lying to me? What, like, what if he goes native with the giants and starts sending him like Jotunheim disinformation, basically? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, just, just Odin sticking his spear into a giant bag of cocaine and doing like lines off the, <laughs> off the end of it. <laughs> yeah, he really is like, he really is that 70s era Aesir yeah. government, basically, yeah, right? That's it. That's it. Send it. Send, send Thor to look at look after Tyr. Uh, as soon as Thor leaves, like my own son, I can't believe he would betray me. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got like the tissue boxes on his shoes. Basically, yeah, yeah. he's like <laughs> yeah. he's like living in a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah. Um. So while Tyr's direct involvement with giants is not necessarily corroborated in the Norse myth, in the Norse myth, he is still regarded very much as a good guy. TM, honorable, trustworthy, all that, all the, that good stuff. Okay. More than that. His trustworthy demeanor was even exploited by the other Aesir at times, as told in the most famous myth regarding Tyr. So this is an excerpt from Britannica.com's article on Tyr. Uh, it is in character as a guarantor of contracts, guardian of oaths, that the most famous myth about him may be understood. As a guarantee of good faith, he placed his hands between the jaws of the monstrous wolf Fenrir, while the gods, pretending sport but intending a trap, bound the wolf. When Fenrir realized he had been tricked, he bit off Tyr's hand, hence Tyr's identification as the one-handed god. So uh, they, the, the Aesir gods, basically Odin, Thor, the rest of them, basically go to, to have a plan where they're like, we want to we wanna trap Fenrir, the, the, monst the monstrous wolf, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they go to Tyr and they say, hey, Tyr, we just want to, we want some sport with Fenrir. We just want to like hunt him for fun and like catch him release. We'll let him go kind of thing. Uh, so they tricked Tyr and Fenrir, and Tyr was so he had told Fenrir like I won't I won't move my hand. You can bite my hand if they if they trick you, because he believed the the Aesir so so much that when <laughs> he'd let the wolf bite his hand off, essentially. Okay. That's 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 how serious your boy is about commitment. Okay, Fenrir bought Twitter. It's about free speech. He can bite <laughs> my hand off if it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, I. I've beaten Fenrir in retail WoW. In one of the recent expansions, you have to go up like this crazy long slide and you go through a portal and you're in like a meadow area and you fight a giant wolf named Fenrir. You can nice. kill him. It's fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, very common symbol in a lot of uh, like Western uh, media, I guess Eastern too, with the FromSoft series Dark Souls. You fight uh, Sif, I believe it is, the giant wolf. Yeah. Right. Uh, also in a meadow. Nice. Um. So like I said before, it's rare in the God of War series that the gods are portrayed as anything but self-centered, controlling, manipulative creatures. Tyr seems to be an outlier, for sure. That is heavily reinforced in the 2018 release. It made way more sense in God of War OG when it was the Greek gods who for 5,000 years have been portrayed as reckless and self-centered, right? So yeah. like Kratos' bias is also like in canon. Yeah. Uh, now, please look under your guys' seats. There. What? You're gonna find some. You're gonna find some tinfoil hats. I did, which, which should protect your brain from the particularly spectacular little boys cannon that's about to follow. So, Jamie, grab that pin where you talked oh. about what if it was tear in the in the right. uh, original I'm trilogy. Still looking for my hat. All it is is receipts down here. <laughs> yeah, receipts <laughs> and socks. I got Paul socks under my seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put the pin in it. Yeah, tear. Okay. So when the Romans came north and encountered the Norse culture, sometime 
after the death of Jesus, right? Right. Uh, they encounter the Norse culture and the, go- the Norse gods, right? There's a lot of swapping of stories about their beliefs, their religions, their stories from each other's respective cultures. And like any, any you know, pantheon in, in history that old, there's usually like a mishmashing and kind of like an overlap between the different stories that, that get told, right? And it's probably a result of this, like over a thousand years, you know, they would tell stories from each other to each other, back to each other, and like it would morph that way. Mm-hmm. So we talked a lot during the last episode about how much of the more modern Norse myth is heavily influenced by Christianity. Uh, Christianity arrived in the region around 1000 CE. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get just it. kidding. Just kidding. I, I don't know. It's just a funny thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christianity arriving. Got you. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, like, <laughs> generally the arrival of Christianity uh, is an ill omen for the locals. <laughs> I, was yeah. looking for, I was looking for a dirty word. Uh, so around 1000 CE, Christianity arrives. Before then, however, the early Roman pantheon was also pretty heavily compared to the Norse pantheon. And for the most part, it seems like the, the two cultures accepted their counterparts as extensions of the same god in many ways. Awesome. Tyr, when viewed by the Romans, was considered the counterpart to Mars. Indeed, the Roman calendar's second day of the work week was once known as Dies Marti, or Mars's day, before becoming Tyr's dagger, or Tuesday, in Anglo-Saxon. Oh, or in French, Mardi, M-A-R-D-I. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Tuesday. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so it's so Tyr is the parallel to the Roman god Mars. Now, Mars also has a counterpart in the Greek pantheon. Do you guys want to guess who? That's Ares. It's Ares. Yeah. God of War in the Greek pantheon was once offered a promise of servitude by a mortal Kratos about to die in battle. Yeah. As Ares is tool and overcome with bloodlust, Kratos is said to kill his own wife and daughter, kicking off the whole franchise. Right. So this is Tyr, Tyr, the very the very calm and measured guy's counterpart in the Greek pantheon is the uh you know rage filled god of war in the in the first game and he's the the final boss of the first game right he's hot so, and blooded <laughs> check it and see yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I'd love for this to be a deliberate nod in in some ways and like when I was doing this episode I was like I have to imagine that you know, when they were when they were making God of War four, like way in early when they, were, when they were just in the drafting stages, they must have been like, yeah, like okay, 2014 well, or something. Like, you know, how, how do we do this? Do, does he revisit the? You know, does he do the Greek pantheon? Do we do the Roman pantheon? No, that's too close. And then somebody must have like looked at the Norse pantheon and like everything falls into place so so well. Okay, so um, Tyr is now is now the God of War. And there's the counterpart to Ares who started Kratos's journey in the original trilogy. But he is a he's measured. He's he's controlled. Uh, he's never taken by a blind raging bloodlust. Now, oh, no, wait a second. Can I can I just like to pop off the yeah. tinfoil hat for a second? <laughs> Are you insinuating that the documents, the, the bureaucrat set off the quintrilogy by manipulating Ares into sending this guy into into the yeah. North myth? So, so I, it, uh, I, I see it more as like the the evil like the rage half of this god that started everything and everything could kind of finish with tears hands so it's like it starts with like two halves of the same it starts with one half of the same god finishes with the other half of the same god and it, it starts off with the bad but it finishes with the good yeah if, if, we happy can, if we consider them the same god like you're you're both exactly like where we're kind of i'm just kind of in a realm here so we're all yeah, we're all yeah, yeah. At the wall. We, we've got our own yeah. <laughs> we've got our okay. bohemian grove is our realm yeah. it, like yeah. on the world tree right i, I mean yeah. re- regardless of like what the what the in-game rationale would be like as a as a storytelling development device and a storytelling medium uh as as metaphor it's really cool to see how kratos in the original trilogy is so much like Ares, rage filled and violent while in god of war 4 he is much subdued much more measured much more controlled just somewhat preoccupied with justice and what's right uh and also has the entire game kratos is filling an oath that's like the the point of the game he's filling the oath that he made to his wife to spread her ashes at the highest peak and it's just like so oh he starts the first trilogy exactly like Ares. And then he starts the second trilogy exactly like Tyr. My dad uh, okay, has a great, yeah. My dad has a quest for me and my brothers to go to uh, somewhere in the northern United States when he passes to spread his ashes. I wonder if yeah. I'll have to fight any gods on the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> at the only, U.S. border. Only if your your dad, and we'll get into we'll get into this later because this is this is kind of a spoiler. But uh, only if your dad's friend friend brother uh, pissed off 
the gods and they're secretly chasing the ashes the dead ashes not chasing you oh uh, bob's idea. ashes okay yeah. Sorry, when you were saying that we needed to put our God of War conspiracy hats, I thought you were making just like, did the writers think 5D chess think so far ahead that they retconned tier into the first game I just, and, no, and not just like the parallels between the gods and yeah. their pantheons? Because you're just, just like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I say so like what this means for tier in the in the rest of the trilogy, who knows? Maybe Peter. Right. I'm, I'm not looking at him. Maybe maybe he doesn't even feature very prominently. Maybe his <laughs> allegiance to the giants has been ma manipulating Kratos all along. We all know how Kratos typically responds to that sort of thing, but we also know, as we're going to get into, like time travel is absolutely established canon, and we'll get into why. It's like yeah. confirmed, hundred percent, no doubt. It's confirmed. You know what's scary with Pete too? His eyebrows are just the clearest to see out of all of us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My hair's really good, good eyebrows. <laughs> it's so eyebrows. it's like trying trying to hide those clues. You know, I, I was watching. I'm like, wow, you can see everything on those things. <laughs> Um, I, I taught Jamie Morse code well, since I've been <laughs> since I've been unemployed. I, I've taken on a hobby, and I'm just like I'm just signaling to him right now when something's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing them both at different times, man. He's sending me two messages at once. Yeah, yeah. you got like <laughs> right hand, left hand, dry, like writing it all down. <laughs> Jamie suddenly like stands up at his desk, grabs all his receipts. One second, I'll be right back. Runs out to a <laughs> grabs a lantern, runs to a horse, like starts galloping into the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I keep my receipts close. I need, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give spoilers for God of War Ragnarok on a podcast. You need to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like whatever Tears involvement is, I just think like it's cool that it's set up. Maybe they don't do anything with it, and like it's just the metaphor of like the God of War in Greece was this, and it was still Kratos. It was how Kratos was. And now the God of War here is this, and it's what Kratos is. You know? yeah. very cool. Well, you know what else would be perfect symmetry if the God of War turn war backwards Rock. between the god of raw and he's a or wrestler oh, oh yeah too, i guess <laughs> right <laughs> this fucking raw oh no that, that would be somebody who doesn't like the god raw because he'd be like this right. fucking raw isn't there yeah. a egyptian god RA. raw or something there yeah is. it's a sun god isn't it oh yeah. Uh, yeah so maybe that they'll go for the the nine and the last three will be raw because raw is backwards war I I, <laughs> I I don't think ancient Egypt had a W. I'm pretty sure it's just R A. Yeah. yeah. I I so I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about a few things. I was thinking about I was thinking about God of War and how it's such good. And I was thinking about this maybe specifically, but how uh, and I was comparing it to like Cyberpunk, which is a game that we all we all like, right? Yeah. I think Cyberpunk is a really good story, and I think this is really good storytelling. And I I think I prefer really good storytelling to really good yeah. story. Where like the the uh, way that this is all delivered in in like kind of piecemeal and like slowly and there's foreshadowing and all that stuff is like really really cool. And Cyberpunk is a great game and it's got a great story, but like the story is just like it's Cyberpunk and sci-fi and it's just like weird and wacky and fun. But yeah. the actual like the actual like and the the voice acting is good. You know the dialogue options are good and everything. But it, you, because you have like branching dialogue and you have dialogue choices and you can choose like different factions and and stuff to go with, it like it limits your ability to tell like a really good story. Mm -hmm. Whereas God of War is like super linear, right? As far as like the main game is concerned, it's like there's only one there's only one ending. There's only like each cutscene only has one way that it it can go. You know what I mean? The only variability is like what armor Kratos is wearing in the cutscene, is which is yeah. why they have so much control over where the camera looks when you're coming over the the ledge or whatever exactly. and stuff. Because yeah. they can tell their and show their story exactly how they want yeah. to. Exactly. Uh, okay. Enough about the Acer. Let's talk about the Vanir for a bit. So the Vanir, by comparison to the Acer, uh, feature only a single name. I think you boys would recognize, which is Freya. Okay. Um, Freya's in the games. Uh, I just said also Frigg in a lot of ways is considered to just be Freya and just, you know, they're, on the sites that I saw, they have like a, here's how the etymology makes it look like they would be the same word at some point, but I'm not going to go that, obviously. I can't remember, but like there are characters who use Freya's name. It's her nickname is Frigg. Isn't it? Mir uh, called Frigg or something like that. It's like, it's like Marge and Midge. For, like, I don't remember. Margaret. I don't really remember in the original game or the original game in God of War four. It's possible it happened. I don't think that's this is not a spoiler that I I would even uh, like. I, I would even call that a spoiler. Like they're they're I think particularly for the purposes of this retelling, it, it they're going to be the same person no matter what. And I, okay. I, I can kind of touch on why I think that'll be, but just some of the stuff that Freya says even in the in God of War four. I'll keep calling it the first game by mistake, but I mean God of War four. Yeah. Um, even in God of War 4, she's going she's gonna to say stuff that's going to make it seem like she's 
probably his only husband. That said, she only has uh, one son with him uh, or one child with him, who we'll also talk about today. Okay. Um, so Freya, which is Old Norse for just lady, uh, is is wild. <laughs> hey, lady. Uh, <laughs> is widely considered the most renowned of the Norse goddesses. She's in charge of love, fertility, battle, and death. Okay. Quick, Pablo. Also, uh, like, not necessarily god of war, but, like, real close with, like, a god of battle. I guess it's, like, without the documentation of Tyr, right? Yeah, they're all, they're, the, like, Norse, it's just, like, they're all gods of war. <laughs> like, yeah. They're just all, <laughs> almost all of them. Uh, so Freya is also the archetype of the Volva, which are shamans in, in old Norse culture who practice magic known as satyr. Isn't that uh, a part, part of a vagina? It is a part it's, of a vagina. Okay. I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> it is. Those I can't believe the soldiers? Christians can scrub this from history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, sham- they're shamans. So like shamans. Actual shamans in like old, old Viking time. Ye old Viking times would have been called Volva. Uh, and they okay. practice the, the magic that they practice is known as satyr. So this is from Daniel McCoy, uh, who we, we uh, was a primary source on the last episode. Seder is a form of pre-Christian Norse magic and shamanism concerned with discerning the course of fate and working within its structure to bring about change, which was done by symbolically weaving new events into being. To do this, the practitioner, with ritual die staff in hand, entered an ecstatic trance in order to be able to interact with the world of spirit. A, a <laughs> die staff is literally something used to, uh, to weave, to weave cloth. Dude, uh, so I, I want oh, that job. Yeah. You just like make shirts and tell people what's going to happen in the future and don't go to war. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, is it the tool you use on a loom that we talked about last week? No, it's it, this is like pre pre loom in this culture anyway, but it's it's like a hand loom. It's it's a die staff, so it's like two prongs, like a two pronged fork essentially, and you just okay. use that to like just weave the the fabric into those those two, which okay. lets you create a weave. Um. So the Vanir in particular, as opposed to the Aesir, are the practitioners of Seder. They're the, the witches and, and the wizards of, of Norse mythology. Um, like any good witch, Freya was loved by pigs, uh, and in turn, <laughs> pig, pigs were sacred to her. In God of War 2018, when Kratos and Atreus fir- oh, yeah. first meet Freya, it's over the body of a boar they were hunting. Which yeah, that's Freya true. was upset about and basically blamed them for, for trying to kill her friend. But in the, yeah. in the Norse myth... Uh, pigs were sacred to her, and and she was loved by pigs in turn. Wow, you she know, was... worship's kind of like, um, how am I tying this together? It's kind of like the internet. I feel like pigs follow ladies around on the internet too. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pigs follow ladies around wherever they go. Yeah, yeah that's true. Always... That's why Freya just means lady. They they yeah. warned us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lady. Yeah, the uh, this is the the weave of the satyr, right? But yeah, exactly. Just vulva. Predicting tusked boars at a construction <laughs> site, just yelling at a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like uh, hanging on the beams, like regular yeah. pigs, with like their <laughs> vests, and their little helmets. <laughs> hey, well, look, at the, look at the poor chaps on. Look at the poor chaps on that girl. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the cement truck is just like compost coming out of it. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> it's just slop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just slop. Lunch, lunch time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> kick off, kick off the slop. <laughs> Um, Freya was known to ride a boar with golden bristles at times. At other times, she rode in a chariot drawn by cats. Uh, Freya was the priv- has the privilege, excuse me, of taking half the souls of those who fall in battle to her great hall, Folkvanger, while the rest can be taken by Odin to Valhalla. Okay. So she gets half of all souls that die in battle. That's divorce for you. Yeah, exactly. They split it right, d- right down the middle, right? Yeah. I do. I, I, I remember the pig. Um, and he does have like yellow tribal paint on him, which yeah. is kind of, I guess, a hint to the the gold there. He, was he yellow? I watched it yesterday. I want to say it was more blue, but no, he's like, um, uh, he's like beige or something. He's a regular looking pig, but he's got like the war paint on him. He does definitely has war paint on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the Aesir and the Fanner were often at odds. The poetic Edda, the source for basically all Norse mythology. Uh, mentions that the war between the two groups, known as the Aesir Vanir War, was the first ever war. So this is the first war ever fought. Um, in one cutscene, that would explain we... why every single character is a god of war. If we all found yeah. out about them through this, right? <laughs> exactly, right. The only <laughs> ones that survived were deemed god of war, gods of war. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So the the Aesir and the Vanir. Uh, oh no, I just read that. Uh, in one cutscene with Freya, Atreus comments that his mother didn't say much about the Vanir, just that they're always at war with the Aesir. So it also holds true in uh, the God of War games. Yeah. Um, 
they still thought that Freya was just some force witch at the time. Whenever he said he said that, not understanding that she was a Vanir god herself. Right. <laughs> the uh, only one we know. The well, only one that like, had been only, uh, had been like kicked out and and like sent there, right? She complains about that. Yeah, which is yeah. We'll we'll, we'll get the only into one that, that well. we know, or the only one that I know is Freya yeah. the Vanir. The only one that I think uh, uh, Peter and Jamie would know specifically. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I get like Gulvig is one of them who we'll talk about, but also probably just Freya. Gulvig. Um, let me I'll read you some of the other ones. You guys can tell me if you recognize it. There's Freya, there's Freyer, who I think we talked about in the last episode. So you guys <laughs> Freyer should know that Jacques. Yeah. <laughs> Jacques. Uh, it's just Freya's brother. There's Njord, who's the god of the sea, who I are the Vanir god of the sea, who okay. I also think we talked about on the last episode. Njord and uh, Fjord. Yeah, okay. Yeah, who is who uh is Freya and Freyr's uh father? Uh there's Nerthus. Like I don't <laughs> I don't I don't think you guys know any of these. Nerthus <laughs> sounds like such a fucking nerd, man. It's uh, Garfield it's Garfield's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nerthus. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a program that we use for get our payment software at work is like Nethris, Nethris. which makes yeah, me think Nethris. of Nerthus. Yeah. Uh, I like Nerthus. to think of uh, Freya's chariot being pulled by Garfield and Nermal. Yeah. <laughs> Garfield cart racing, yeah. man. Uh, Nermal, Nermal there, OP. There's, there's, there's a tear there holding his, his hand in Odin, uh, Odie's mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh, Odie, Odin. Odie, yes. Odin. Yeah, it <laughs> um, Okay, so the war, uh, the Aesir Vanir War, is kicked off when the almost second Vanir in our story, Golvig, was captured by the Aesir. Uh, this is uh, Henry Adam Bellow's translation of the poetic, poetic Edda, and it reads, The war I remember, the first in the world, when the gods with spears had smitten Golvig, and in the hall of Hor had, her, had burned her, three times burned and three times born, often again, yet ever she lives. So... Ouch. The uh, Aesir gods capture this Vanir god, Golvig, uh, stab her a bunch, burn her three times to death, and she keeps coming back to life, essentially. Uh, yeah. this, I mean, burn this... me once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, burn it's, me it's, twice. It's burn me once, shame on me. technology they had, right? They, they <laughs> yeah. only had the one thing to try. They can't just, they can't shoot her and burn her. Yeah. Right. Burn, burn me once, shame on me. Or shame on you, burn me twice, shame on me, burn me three, ow e, please stop burning me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this stabbing and burning, widely regarded as the driving force uh, for the war between the Aesir and Vanir. Okay. Uh, when I just said the almost second Vanir, Vanir in our story, when talking about uh, Golvig, I mean by a popular interpretation of the poem and of Golvig by scholars. Uh, so this is from Daniel McCoy. The Vanir goddess Freya was always the foremost practitioner of the art of Satyr, the most terrifically powerful kind of magic. Like historical satyr practitioners, she wandered from town to town plying her craft for hire. Under the name Hadir, which means bright, she eventually came to Asgard, the home of the Aesir. The Aesir were quite taken by her powers and zealously sought her services. But soon they realized that their values of honor, kin loyalty, and obedience to the law were being pushed aside by the selfish desires they sought to fulfill with the witch's magic. Blaming Freya for their own shortcomings, the Aesir called her Gulvig, Gold Greed, and attempted to murder her. Three times they tried to burn her, and three times she was reborn from the ashes. So, okay. this is F- Freya was Gulvig, was captured by the Aesir. They used her to do magic, and then they realized, like, oh, uh, you know, using magic makes us makes us lazy, you know? Uh, <laughs> being able to work from home really has made me not want to do any work at all, so, you know. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, the Aesir just have a bunch of empty skyscrapers they're paying rent on for nothing. Yeah, they're trying yeah. to get people to come back to Asgard. Yeah. And they're like, it's her fault. Uh, so they, they, they blame Freya. This, I think this really sets the stage in for God of War's take on the Freya-Odin relationship, right? Um, while Freya does eventually marry the hoary old Cyclops and bear his son, Balder, she does mention in a cutscene in God of War 4 having a tricky relationship with the Asgardian. Uh, Is Odin trying to spy on Freya that whole game? I can't remember. With the Freya gives you the mark to hide from his his gaze, essentially. Oh. It's, so I would say it's safe to assume that Freya can probably hide from him. She uh, ain't Freya, no ghosts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that makes her feel good. Uh, <laughs> So the Aesir Vanir War wages for, for some time with the Asgardians using good old-fashioned sword and board, while the Vanir struck, uh, stuck to more magical attacks, and they traded pole position for a time. So nobody's, neither side's kind of gaining an upper hand. Uh, here's another quote for, from Daniel McCoy. 
Eventually, the two tribes of divinities became weary of fighting and decided to call a truce. As was customary among the ancient Norse and other Germanic peoples, the two sides agreed to pay tribute to each other by sending hostages to live uh, among the other tribe. Freya, Freyr, and the Njord of the Vanir went to the Aesir, and Hynir and Mimir went to the Vanir. Oh. So they, they trade hostages to broker a peace in the Norse myth, but it's implied in the games that Freya's marriage was one of necessity, not love. When describing how she is forbidden from leaving Midgard, uh, one of you mentioned that earlier, how like she can't go back home to, Van- to Vanaheim. Um, when, she, when you're talking about that scene with Atreus, because she basically has like a window portal to Vanaheim that she can look yeah, through, yeah, yeah. so it feels like she's home. Uh, Freya calls her her uh, the her inability to leave Midgard a gift from my former husband upon our separation. Petty cruelty would be reason enough for him, but as with all his rash decisions, he is driven by fear. The Vanir were the greatest threat to the Aesir until our marriage brokered peace. So in the games, it seems like maybe not a trading of hostages, but just a marriage of alliance. Okay. Right, yeah. Um, Where, yeah. I mean, you've got like the king of the the king of the aggressors is just like, give me your hippie queen and her bare feet. And they're just like, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so why ever or however the two decide, uh, Freya and Owen do tie Freya and Odin do tie the knot. Um, it's not all long after the hitch that Freya gives birth to a bouncing baby boy, Balder. Ten months later, there was um, performance issues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's yeah, got one uh, eye and one ball, actually. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'd imagine that'd be a really painful childbirth for her. Obviously, he would feel nothing, but sure, <laughs> like just like for this imagery, like it would probably suck having that kid. He seems like a bad kid. Yeah. Baller, uh, yeah. In the games, he seems like a bad kid. In the Norse myth, he's he's generally loved, uh, and we'll oh. talk about why they, they. I mean, they definitely position him as like a real, real shithead in the in the games. But he's in the game. He's gone insane, right? Yeah, I've never actually played uh, Baldur's Gate, so I don't know what Baldur's like normally. But anyway, so Freya gives birth to a the, to this to Baldur, uh, the shithead, uh, in the games. Um, coming up after the break, we have the life and death of Baldur. <laughs> 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 there we go. That bang will let me know exactly where the break starts. <laughs> Baldur was one of the most beloved of all the gods. The son of Odin, the chief of the gods, and the benevolent sorceress goddess Freya, Baldur was a generous, joyful, and courageous character who gladdened the hearts of all who spent time with him. When, therefore, he began to have ominous dreams of some grave misfortune bef- befalling him, the fearful gods appointed Odin to discover their meaning. That's a quote from Daniel McCoy uh, on his site, NorseMythology.org. Uh, Friend of the God- show at this point. Exactly, right? <laughs> Mr. McCoy. In God of War 4, Freya, when trying to convince Kratos to tell his son Atreus of the boy's own divinity, Freya talks about her own son when he was born and how there was a prophecy of how he would die. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, you were... Uh, I can't stop thinking of the bonus track that you released that was just my only voice. Like, <laughs> and you guys are both cut out because now every small noise I make, I'm like, it feels so isolated, you know, like every breath, every Dude, every... James standing out here naked. He's just got the he's got the podium in front of him. hiding his name, you know? I feel like you guys aren't here with me all the time, you know, after that event. <laughs> OK, so Balder, he's cool. He, he's a, a likable, uh, he's cool. but he's very cool in the Norse myth. So Peter was saying before the or you were both kind of saying before the, the break there that, yeah, he's a real shithead in the game. Like he's very cocky and arrogant and. And you don't Mm -hmm. the entire game. You don't know what he fucking wants with you. He's just like chasing you relentlessly. And I kind of alluded to it earlier and we'll get into it in a little bit about how he's not chasing you. He's chasing your wife's your wife uh, and your wife's ashes, essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, Freya tells the story when Atreus is dying because he he doesn't know that he's a god and his mortality is is warring with his uh, divinity, essentially. Um, oh, is that what's happening in that scene? Uh, that's like when you meet Freya, isn't it? You like uh, not, not the first time you meet Freya. When you meet Freya, yeah. you kill the boar. But then uh, right. at some point, uh, Atreus, you fight Magni and Modi, uh, I think. Uh, and or no, this is just before that. Anyway, you Atreus starts to become sick, which is something that's been hinted at throughout the game. Kratos right. is always telling telling Atreus like, "No, don't do that. The sickness might come back." And he's like, "Oh, I haven't been sick in years." Blah blah blah. And right, you find right. out it's because Kratos never told him that he's a god. And so it's like he, that's making him sick somehow. Uh, <laughs> and 
and Freya it's like is, a Victorian orphan. It's just like, no, Freya, yeah. the, the whooping cough has come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's it's like I don't know why it's like I I don't know why he keeps getting sick. Now get back up that chimney and sweep. Yeah, sweep like our life <laughs> depended on it. Um, so Freya's trying to save Atreus's life here. She's she's telling Kratos what he needs to do to save Atreus. Are uh, gods and, in this context kind of like Tinkerbell, where it's like if fairies die if you don't believe in them, where like if you don't know you're a god, you kill yourself. Is yes, it the, uh, is the faith that keeps gods alive? No, I don't think so. Like. I think I it's like the, it, to me it feels like something like uh, like god puberty or whatever like so like if you're going imagine you're going through puberty but you didn't know that was supposed to happen to you you'd be like there's all these changes I'm all fucked up I don't know what's wrong with me yeah. but it's like no okay that's just like your godly power just what have you don't. done Kratos yeah, yeah, have yeah, you ever exactly. given him the talk you never <laughs> showed him a VHS from the 70s what were you thinking <laughs> like putting it into her cauldron and like mixing yeah. it around yeah, exactly the magnetic tape out of a cassette yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you might get all depressed too if you had all these urges just didn't know how to bust a nut so mm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Armpit hair the urge to destroy the world of men is <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah freya's freya's trying to save atreus while also telling the story about how like her son was there was a prophecy of her how her son would die which right. we're gonna learn is pretty ironic um the player does not know two key things uh when playing this at this point in the game to realize how important this conversation is uh, the first thing that Balder, the enigmatic figure who uh, has seemingly been chasing Kratos and Atreus across all of creation, is the son of Freya. And the player also does not yet know who exactly Kratos' son Atreus is. So why was the son of Freya chasing, chasing Kratos? The truth we learn at the end of the game is that he wasn't. He was chasing Faye, Kratos' late wife, and Atreus' mother, as uh, father and son take her ashes to spread on the highest peak in all the realms. Uh, so why was Balder chasing a dead person, right? Well, throughout the game, Kratos is fairly convinced that his wife was just a regular old Freya, lady, excuse me, uh, <laughs> but, but, but the truth waited for him at the end of their journey. She had asked Kratos to spread her ashes at the highest peak in all the realms. He had taken this to mean she wanted to be memorialized at, at a nearby mountain, the tallest peak Kratos is aware of in the area. When they arrive, however, Mimir, still fused with a tree, tells them that the highest peak is actually in Jotunheim, right? Right. That's the giant land. That's the yeah. land of the giants. We talked at length about Jotunheim in our last God of War episode about how it, you know, it stems from the word Utgard, which just means outside the fence. It essentially uh, refers to just uh, makes sense, like, man. Wilderness? Bigger people, bigger people, bigger mountains. You know, <laughs> it's just <laughs> that, that's funny how it works out that way. Like, is their whole planet to scale of the giants? Are they on like? Are their whole realm? Do they have a so, bigger realm? Like big uh, spoons? Is that yeah. what you're getting at? <laughs> yeah. If you brought a spoon through, would it be a normal spoon or a big spoon? I don't know. Well, Kratos, Kratos and Atreus don't get bigger when they when they do get there. Well, maybe. Uh, we don't know. It might be a scale thing. No, <laughs> you can see them in the distance. You see all the, the corpses of the giants in the distance, right? Right. right. Um, so, yeah, we, we talked at length about, about Jotunheim in the last episode. Uh, it's the home of the giants. Sure enough, Faye had asked her ashes to be spread in Jotunheim because she was a giant all along. And Faye uh, wasn't big. Laufey wasn't big as far as we know like their house was regular size and kratos is a pretty normal like tall dude but pretty normal size so and um, like Atre atreus the child is all like very like visibly like nine ten years old too and he's like regular size right yeah yeah being 30 yeah, uh, feet tall is a recessive gene that's actually a spoiler for ragnarok that's the one that i'll <laughs> that's the one i'll throw in there <laughs> It skips a generation. Yeah. That would be that would suck, man. It, it, well, it would suck for uh, the mothers in the small generation yeah, the having small to family. have all the big kids. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, no, it turns out you guys are both just dumb. Uh, oh. the, the the giants in North Myth, Norse Smith, aren't necessarily big. Giant in modern English is its own thing. It's like a bad anglicization of the word. Giant never in in Old Norse meant anything to do with being big. Uh, in Norse, giant, or more accurately, Jotun or Thurs, would have meant alternately devourer, powerful and injurious one, or thorn-like. That's okay. that's what giant means. It doesn't mean big at all. Thorn-like. 
Yeah, I almost wanted to make a comment like Giants aren't necessarily big. It's just a separate race. But I couldn't remember if you explained that to me or if it was somewhere else. We talked about that during the last episode. Yeah. Okay. thank God. Yeah. Uh, Damn. My my (laughs) anti-spoiler brain. I'm just like, I'm just not. I just can't say anything. (laughs) At at present, (laughs) on my second beer, I don't remember where I got this information. Um, Honestly, honestly, Pete, there's like one thing that I think might be spoiled for me in this. But we're about to get into some more. Cool. Um, oh, you can't see my eyebrows, I'll guess so it doesn't end. matter. Guess, 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 guess. I'll guess the ending of all the God of Wars is that Atreus needs to kill uh, Kratos. Kratos? Kratos? Yeah. Pete and it's like a really sad moment. Peter's ahead of the end of the right now. Oh, he's moving yeah. his eyebrows! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that would be some nice symmetry, too, because uh, Kratos kills all his his daddy and everything, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does kill Zeus. Sort um, of. He's in Hellheim too. He's <laughs> still clearly alive and watching everything he does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, gods are weird. Um, yeah. Just a quick point on your thorn like one being interesting. So, we did talk last week about Jotunheim, at, like the land of the giants, is mm. literally like the civil, like the, the savage lands or the wilderness outside of civilization. So, like thorn like being the, okay, the root yeah. of that, being like very thorny place, makes it just right. makes a lot of sense, right? Oh, that was cool. an interesting connection. The like uncut brambles on the on the exactly. edge of the the Viking property, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Like uh, we talked about it last week, but it like Utgard is another word for for Jotunheim, which is just outside the fence. So anything outside the fences right. of okay. civilization, yeah. right? Oh, um, you did. We talked about it last time at length. I, d- I didn't know that <laughs> this time, so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still valid. <laughs> Jamie's Jamie's the easiest guy to impress in these these episodes. Just tell him something you told him just last week, and he's yeah. amazed all over again. Your God yeah, of episode was like five six weeks ago. Yeah, I, I, know, I know. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so I think longer, honestly. So the giants uh, in Norse myth are destined to end, and the God of War trilogy are destined to end the world in a war against the Aesir uh, called Ragnarok. Right? Okay. Uh, it's the end of all things. However, that's, that's what Ragnarok is: is the war. It's it's the end the, the end of the world. The end of the world, right? Which we talked about last time. Yeah, we did. We talked about that after three winters, pa- uh, a winter spanning three summers passes. And, thimble uh, winter. Th- thimble winter. <laughs> uh, however, so at the end of God of War, Kratos and Atreus see that Jotun is a dead place full of only the corpses of the Jotun who have fallen, presumably by two Odin's machinations. We kind of know that Thor went and killed them all at some point. Uh, so how they're going to show up and, and kill all the Aesir in, in Ragnarok remains to be seen, but um there's still some giants around right for sure uh we also learned uh at that time that Faye had wanted a different name for atreus which was loki right so that's the that's the big spoiler right that loki is actually Mm -hmm. your son and i i swear to god i remember only one time for for a split second i remember i was i was like in the boat in god of war because a lot of the travel scenes are like you're in a canoe uh and i remember canoeing through this like canyon and she's being like hmm I wonder if like Loki's going to feature in this in these games at all, and then like uh, promptly like filing that away and like never thought about it again. Then we got to the uh, end of the game, and I was like, "Oh my god, there it is!" Uh, you did a good job of keeping that secret low key up until now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it low key though. Yeah. The 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 realms of God of War four are super dead. You don't encounter other than Magni and Modi as like kind of like demi or, or like like mini bosses. You don't encounter any gods at all in that game. Freya. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's true. But you don't know at the time. Mimir, no, Mimir is an Aesir, so you do encounter Mimir as well. Okay. Um, but, but, yeah. I mean, there's like if you beat the game on the hardest Make. difficulty, you can see Thor's hammer after the credits. Yeah, exactly. Right. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not even that you see his hammer. Like you see Thor after the credits, right? We don't see his it, face. It, he's like silhouetted. Yeah. Then you see. Oh yeah, Milner. sure. You yeah. see his hammer because yeah. he he keep that thing strapped. Right. You don't need to do it on the hardest difficulty. You just need to go back to your house at the end of the game. Oh wow! I never did that. Never mind. I did. Whoa! Did you can, um, back where you buried your uh, your chain blades or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're yeah. under the floorboards. Yeah, chaos blades. Um, or is so, it chaos blades? Um, Loki turns out your son. Great, great twist. Um, according to, we're going to talk about Loki for a good while now. He's hit made, like Thor and Odin and Loki are probably the three most. Like there's the most stories about these three, right? Where Loki is is almost always the heel. Like he's always the one causing mischief or like 
you know, driving the stories in a way because like, oh, Loki did something that uh, like this hero has to fix or something like that. Loki is a trickster god. Also, very common husky name. I've seen a lot yeah. of Lo- Lokis, really? and, Lokis and Lunas. Yeah. Okay. Loki, if it's a boy, Luna, if it's a girl. And uh, that's huh. a good husky name. Yeah. You, you probably thank Marvel for that. I, I honestly think like Marvel, you know, say what you want about the movies, then, they, you know, um, they're they're not are cinematic masterpieces, but uh, they they I'll do do work on. I'll put that <laughs> one in there. <laughs> the, the Marvel character Loki does a good job of being like the same kind of of character uh, before his. And I I don't know if how many of them you guys have seen, but like before he kind of has like a bit of a redemption in one of the later uh, Avengers movies or something like that. But he he like when he's originally like working with kind of the bad guys to like capture the Infinity Stones and stuff that is more like Loki style, but being very much a trickster, very much willing to put other people in the in the line of fire and never kind of himself. Um, right. Okay. So according to Norse myth, Loki is the son of the giant Far Bauti, and Lofe, uh, the meaning of which is unknown, uh, uh, is his mother, right? Which is his okay, mother so in the game. Replaced his Loki. dad with Kratos in the game's fiction. Okay, you remember you remember when I said that I think the uh, the writers when they were first drafting this, they they checked Norse myth and stuff just fucking fell into place. Yeah, mm-hmm. the giant Farbody, uh, nothing is known about him. Okay, Farbody, his name he's only ever mentioned twice in the Poetic Edda, and each time it's to refer to Loki as his son. So it's always okay. it's never like Farbody did this; it's Farbody's son Loki did this. So they're always talking about Loki. Okay, his name means cruel striker. Like, okay. is that not the perfect name for Kratos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Especially <laughs> early Kratos, yeah. Like, it's just, and it's like, nothing else is known about him. They just know that he's Loki's dad. That's all that, that's all that they know about. They call him a giant, but. Oh, yeah, I guess. Giant, the, the, giant the, the, any size. They, he comes from the outside of civilization, as far as the Norse know, which would make him a Jotun in some ways. Or, a, <laughs> or from Sparta, like Kratos yeah. is, right? Yeah, it's exactly. kind of a thorny guy. Kind very, of a thorny guy. Yeah. Very thorny guy. Very, prick, very prickly. I just yeah. I, I read that I was like cruel striker is just like the perfect name for like a, the perfect nickname for Kratos right <laughs> like he's cruel yeah, he's a striker I love how the original intent of the God of War trilogy was to have like the star of Bethlehem post credit in God of War three and the three wise men and it's like <laughs> I don't know that's probably really hard whereas yeah. just like no no they just they just wrote everything pre Beowulf for us and we're just gonna yeah. swap out we're just gonna swap Kratos in exactly yep. yeah. That's perfect. Um, what would you want it to be called if you had a cool name like that? A cruel striker, just something, a two word thing that you could call yourself at any big time. Big eggplant. Dude, I was going to say big dickus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we I want to be big eggplant because I'm a vegetarian. I care very much about being uh, vegetarian. Yeah, right. Eggplant's a great vegetarian dish. Right. right. More meat, unethical. That's yeah. super good. <laughs> Less dick, more eggplant. He has, to, he has to keep the, the, the meat percentage of his body as low as possible. <laughs> uh, well, you, you get along really well with those, uh, what was it, El- Elish Norn? She's trying to keep yeah. the meat low, too. You know, you got to keep exactly. the cybernetics high. The yeah. Meat low. yeah. Trying to keep the meat balanced, yeah. Got balanced yeah. meat, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Lore Boy's canon, uh, maybe Kratos will be, maybe already has been called Far Body at some point, but I don't know. I feel like that name's going to come back somehow or some way. Uh, like somebody's going to say that's the nickname that they gave you or somebody's going to call him Cruel Striker or something like that because it just fits too perfectly. He came um, from far and leaves behind bodies. He stacks um, bodies, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree as far as Kratos and Loki are concerned, uh, at least not in the god killer sense. Uh, the giants in Norse myth don't have a particular affinity for the gods and Loki has fathered a few prominent figures in those stories. Um, so by the giantess Anger Boda, also known as the mother of monsters, the one who brings grief, she who offers sorrow and harm bitter. <laughs> Jeez. Loki Any giants Sire. marry this one or what? <laughs> Lo- Loki sires a real superstar cast of renegade monsters. No, Loki bangs her a bunch. To, to Loki sire, likes her? To, to sire some monsters. So Atreus in the games uh... si- sleeps with Anger Boda to sire a bunch of uh, a bunch of monsters essentially huh. my dad didn't tell me that I was a god until I was a teenager so now I sleep with this mentally ill giant <laughs> <laughs> it's not mentally ill it's very powerful the Is mother she... of monsters dude yeah oh man well, she doesn't sound very stable she doesn't sound very stable I mean fair so uh, 
they sire a bunch of children. Uh, of those names, Hel, the goddess of the underworld, Jormungand, the serpent who slays Thor during Ragnarok, and Fenrir, the wolf who bites off one of the hands of Tyr and who kills Odin during Ragnarok. Okay. So, of the listed three, in God of War 4, Jormungand features heavily, while both Fenrir and Hel are not seen. Anyone, who, anyone who's played the game, like Peter, <laughs> might be scratching their head at this point, because if Atreus is Loki, he seems awful young to have spawned a big old snake as old as time who circles the world. We talked a lot yeah, about Jormungand on the last time episode. Travel. Yeah. He, yeah, so my best guess, it's time is a flat circle, time travel shenanigans. They okay. talk about like the end of the world and the cycle of, of time, right? Um, it's oh. fully it's fully canon in the game that Atreus did or does bang a giantess named Angerboda and sires Jormungand uh, oh. uh, and the rest. Okay. Okay. So no, it's uh, right. there are consequences to hitting it raw. <laughs> <laughs> what if Kratos is actually Ares and he started this whole internal struggle on himself? Well, no, he killed Ares fire. in the first game. Yeah, he killed himself. That was his future self who started this all. Oh, because. maybe, yeah. <laughs> After Tyr went back in time to file the paperwork that set off exactly. the five games. Right, that, exactly. that, that we have well, thus far, of course. So the Giants seem to be the ones who, who have the most control over, like, time. The Vanir are, are kind of the mages. Um, but Tyr was also known to work very closely with the uh, with the Giants. Okay, this I just remembered this bit, too. Uh, but just tying into the Ares bit... Tyr was known to travel to other cultures and they there there's like murals in the game as you're descending down his temple that show him in like in China and like in these other places and in Whoa. the in the basement Kratos finds a vase that has a picture of himself on it. Oh right, that's true. Right. Well, for sure he went to yes. Greece and he collected that stuff and it's like a wow. picture of like oh wow. Okay, I just I just remember that. So I didn't think enough about it to talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> I like how you would make like canon uh, predictions for a game that's already out too. Yeah. <laughs> it's I like refuse, people I at home. Spoil it for myself. Well, yeah. what we're doing now is like lore boys canoning the writer's room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Which, much. if the three of us can come up with that in what forty minutes, I'm pretty sure professional video game writers may have hey, may have stumbled I mean, across that. Like, hey, what if he was a tourist? God of War's already yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so many of these things fall into place, and and like I said, it's good storytelling. Yeah, where like yeah. it seems everything seems so deliberate that I have to believe that. Like, I do think that they they were like testing different pantheons. They got to Norse. They're like, well, this just works fucking good. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, I found a guy who writes stuff. His name is Mister McCoy, and they're just like, yeah, print it out, print out <laughs> multiple copies. <laughs> How about we just go next, like less serious for the next one? So for the next pantheon. Just all the mascots off of cereal boxes. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, so just like <laughs> Kratos just fucking uppercutting like Tony, Tony the, the Tiger. Tiger. <laughs> yeah, or just like smashing the like, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Lucky Charms guy just getting his neck cut by the two chain blades. Well, yeah, <laughs> because it's God of War at its core is a Metroidvania with like action gameplay, right? So you mm -hmm. would need to kill, like there would be like a pathway you can't cross until you kill the Lucky Charms Leprechaun, and then you can use his pot of gold to create like a light bridge to solve <laughs> you, puzzles, right? You, right. Get a you get a magic sift that lets you sift out just the marshmallows. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so pretty sure it's time travel. Uh, so I, I did mention that he he Loki sires Jormungan. Snap, crack, snap, crackle, pop would be the worst boss. I bet it'd be yeah. so fucking annoying. So all three annoying, of them. Yeah, yeah three it would be like yeah. three stages where you'd get like snap would start. You get him down to seventy five percent, then crackle comes in. He's got less HP, like the gargoyles in Dark Souls, basically. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then pop yeah. is when they all fuse into their third stage, which does way more damage. Right. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. Giant. The and milk comes in and he starts like popping and going oh, insane. Oh, you yeah. have to platform up <laughs> while the milk rises because the milk's an instant kill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So Jormungand is, is in the games. He, Loki fathers Jormungand, who is the great serpent. He slays, is said to slay Thor during Ragnarok and Fenrir wow. is, is the one who bit off Tyr's hand is also the one who said to, who will kill Odin uh, during Ragnarok. And Hel is the goddess of the underworld, right? Okay. So, right. um, pretty it's it's pretty pretty much confirmed from my point of view that that atreus loki or at least loki is the one who's who sired this in the game we think it's time travel uh when talking to freya after meeting the world serpent atreus remarks i'm good with languages even ones i hadn't heard before but when he talks i can't understand any of it which is like a weird um like a weird detail to include that he couldn't he understood all these other languages that he didn't get 
but I'm going to guess it's just because of like <laughs> the some time travel shenanigans that it's like, you know, Marty McFly and Back to the Future, like he couldn't have understood his own language or something, or he'd erase the the time <laughs> loop, you know, damage the timeline kind of thing. Sure, yeah. Um, Loki gets back to the 80s and no one speaks English anymore. It's just <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> uh, so throughout the game, there are Jotnar shrines, uh, which are built by the giants to commemorate, commemorate people or places and drop some lore. That's the the mirror, the scenes that I was just describing about tier traveling to different worlds are in a Jotnar shrine as you're d- descending into um tears temple which are the the panel the three paneled shrines essentially right it's the uh, the giant wardrobes with the, yeah exactly yeah and it's just got a mural inside of it so one of those shrines is dedicated of course to the giant jormungander and the left panel shows anger boda breastfeeding the young serpent the text below uh, anger anger boda is is, is jormungand's mom right so she's breastfeeding right, him right, like yeah. as a baby uh the text below that mural says son of loki and anger boda Brother of Fenrir, Hell, and the Iron Wolves. So confirmed, Jormungandr right. is is Loki's son. At the very least, we know Snake, that snakes aren't supposed to breastfeed. Man. breastfeed. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird to think of a snake <laughs> breastfeeding? And the snakes ain't got no boobies. Yeah, is it like blowing up uh, one of them long balloons? Yeah. Like, it just fills up with milk. It gets it completely milk, solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I said brother of Fenrir, Hell, and the Iron Wolves uh, for Jormungand, uh, and I thought the Iron Wolves stood out, so I did some some research on them. I have a quote here from the Prose Edda. A witch dwells to the east of Midgard in the forest called Ironwood. In that wood dwell the troll women who are known as Ironwood women. The old witch bears many giants for sons and all in the shape of wolves. And from this source are these wolves sprung. The saying runs thus, from this race shall come one that shall be mightiest of all. He that is named Moonhound or Managarmer, mm-hmm. he shall be filled with the flesh of all those men that die, and he shall swallow the moon. Um, so at <laughs> Rag- at Ragnarok, uh, Dude, I have to say the beginning of that quote had so many W's. Like you don't get that many dwells, W's. A witch in dwells in the east of the wood. Like I, I felt like it was <laughs> from my internet brain thought it was going to be one of them uwu posts because there's so many. <laughs> dwells. A witch dwells in the woods. <laughs> yeah, just giving birth to nothing but wolves. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. me, me trying to read Norse mythology to to Jamie, being like, "Can you make it like an uwu or a copy pasta for me, please?" <laughs> <laughs> my attention span, Dad. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I need some mobile gameplay on one of these uh, streams <laughs> here, so I can focus on what you're saying. <laughs> so I mentioned the the wolf M- Mana Garmer. Uh, Garm is wolf or hound in in Norse, so that's Moonhound. Mana Garmer is mentioned in the game once, alongside another wolf god, Skull, who in the myth are variably con- variably considered to be different facets of Fenrir. They might be Fenrir, they might be unique wolves. Who kind of knows? Managarmir and Skull are featured in the wolf puzzle in Tyr's Vault, where you have to get Managarmir, called Hati in the game. He's also called Hati in the myth, uh, which means hatred. Uh, you have to get him to swallow the moon and Skull to swallow the sun, or Kratos drowns. <laughs> it's a Hati um, with a far body. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, in the myth, when, when Ragnarok comes, Ma- Ma- Managarmir, this wolf, or Hati, uh, this wolf will, will, swallow, will devour the moon and Skull will devour the sun. At, at Ragnarok, okay, um, and there these are the Iron Wolves, and the, and there are other wolf brothers that come from this place called the Iron Wolf, uh, the Ironwood. Excuse me. Cool. So Loki, however, does not necessarily leave the dirty work of God killing to his, only to his progeny. Okay, he also sometimes leaves it up to people who are foolish enough to listen to his silver tongue. <laughs> uh, so another excerpt from Daniel McCoy. Loki is perhaps best known for his malevolent role in the death of Balder. After the death of the beloved god Balder is prophesied. Baldur's mother, Frigg, secures a promise from every living thing not to harm her son. Well, almost everything. No such oath is obtained from the mistletoe, which the gods think too small and safe a thing to harm Baldur. I thought they were interviewing all of creation. Just like, all right, what do you want? Don't kill (laughs) Baldur. And the one person who didn't show. But like that would suggest also like a queue of plants making a promise. (laughs) Absolutely. She, She got so... On Daniel McCoy's site, here he says every living, he got a promise from every living thing. On another, in the actual, on his page on the actual death of Baldur, he says everything living and non-living. So the myth is like Freya went around. Yeah, Freya went around with her like, you know, CIA uh, wet work specialists. Of course. And they just like tortured oaths out of everybody. 
and said like <laughs> you're not you're not going to harm Boulder. You're not going to harm Boulder. Uh, and then mistletoe, I guess, is the white guy in this analogy, and just like he got, they they just like, okay, we're not gonna torture you, but like you're cool. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so er, early on in the game, God of War four, the dwarf Sindri gifts Atreus some arrows made of, wouldn't you know, mistletoe. Mistletoe. Mm. Whether or not the dwarf knew of their potential is hard to say. It is established that the dwarven brothers do not look kindly upon the Aesir, particularly Thor who uses their magnum opus to genocide the Jotun. And yeah. they are pretty explicitly against that in the game. They also seem to be like very cunning and very wise. They kind of, they're kind of, they kind of seem like smart people playing, you know, the fool in a lot of senses, but they, they seem extremely powerful and they can just slip between the realms. Uh, Sindri can be invisible. So he could in theory be in like any room at any time and you wouldn't even know. Right. There's like early on in that game when he tosses the apple to Kratos, which is a great comedy scene. Where he like throws an apple to Kratos, who just lifts up his axe and bisects it and just doesn't even react. He's like, eh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, like Sindri explains how he doesn't teleport per se, but like dwarf magic is is like finding the the meaning in reality or something like that. So yeah. he just becomes unreal. Yeah, he, he can like slip off of the weave or something like that. We, we yeah, talked a lot about know. the dwarfs in the last episode, but like it so kind of heavily implies. Like, why else would he give Atreus mistletoe arrows of all things, right? Like, right. Mis- mistletoe is not known for being particularly good arrows, as far as I know. Dwarves yeah. being really good with, like, stone and, like, this hardest surface and being able to navigate deep underground, too. Like, mm-hmm. being able to weave out a reality for a second and be like, oh, the nearest cavern's all the way down there. And then pop yeah. back yeah. in and dig and stuff. And, mm-hmm. yeah. um, so, another uh, continuing the quote from McCoy. After these oaths were secured, the gods made a sport out of the situation. They threw sticks, rocks, anything else on hand at Baldur, and everyone laughed as these things bounced off and left the Shining God unharmed. The wily and disloyal Loki sensed an opportunity for mischief. Immediately upon hearing that the mistletoe was Baldur's only weakness, Loki departed, located the mistletoe, carved a spear out of it, and brought it to where the gods were playing their new favorite game. He approached the blind god Hodir and said, you must feel quite left out having to sit back here away from the merriment, not being given a chance to show Balder the honor of proving his invincibility. The blind god concurred. Here, said Loki, handing him the shaft of mistletoe, I will point your hand in the direction where Balder stands and you throw this branch at him. So Hod mm. threw the mistletoe, it pierced the god straight through, and he fell down, dead on the spot. Okay. Uh, again, Loki doesn't do his, dirty, his own dirty work. He, you know, convinces this old blind guy <laughs> to, uh-huh. to do it for him. Oh, uh, I saw this. Patsy sweetest <laughs> moment between a uh, blind person and their service dog today. Sorry to, I'll, I'll do it really fast, but no. uh, there was a, a, someone was crossing and a car came flying through and like almost hit this blind person and their dog stopped them like mm-hmm. at the side of the road, like just before the car good, was coming. Good doggo. The very good doggo did, did their job. The person who was being an asshole driving very much shouldn't have been driving that way. And they got across the street and the owner went down and hugged the no. dog. Aww. I, I like literally teared up. I was like, that is a beautiful moment. Man. That was, <laughs> that so that was, yeah. If, if only Hodir had a, a seeing eye dog to stop him from taking <laughs> yeah. a mistletoe spear from, from Loki. Yeah. <laughs> One of those dogs who was supposed to like tear the sun out of the sky could have been helping him. Yeah. <laughs> it's Hodir blind, but his, his pointing stick has got the spear, the, yeah. the spear on the end. <laughs> just poking the corpse of Baldur really. um, yeah. <laughs> so in the game Loki's part here is not as actively deliberate again you know how does time travel work like what are Brock and Sindri's involvement you know like all like, how does fate work in this game we don't really know maybe with time travel being what it is Loki like told Brock and Sindri in the past to do to give him the arrows in the future like we just don't know right yeah because yeah. he doesn't um, even have them in his quiver, right? He ha- he like clips it. He clips the arrowhead onto so, his like belt or yeah, something. Yeah. So any, anyone anyone who knows the, who knew the Norse myth while they were playing the game must have just been watching that like one little piece of mistletoe just track its merry way back to Baldur. Like if you knew this story yeah. from the Norse myth, huh. you must have just been like, when this moment happened, you must have just been like, ah, here we go. That's perfect. <laughs> so sometime after receiving the gift from Sindri, uh, Atreus's quiver of arrows breaks. Kratos draws one out and uses the mistletoe shaft to bind it back into place across his, his chest and puts the rest of his mistletoe arrows back in his quiver. So he's still got a full quiver of mistletoe arrows. Right, that's it. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a safety pin, basically. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's a, good thing, it's a good thing he does bind it. It's a good thing the strap broke. It's a good thing that he does bind it that way again. Because the next time the duo sees Freya, she's none too happy about the quiver full of sun-killing bullets on Atreus's back. <laughs> <laughs> 
When it's, like, it's like you walk into her house and you've got like a the plastic thing of peanuts. She's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And then like throws all the peanuts in the fire. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so when, when, when Kratos and Atreia, Atreus bring her Mimir's head for resurrection, she, the first thing she notices is the, the arrows on Atreus's back. Where, she says, wait, where did you get those? Give them to me now. Those, these arrows are dangerous. They're wicked. You find any more, you destroy them. Understand? And she's like yelling at Atreus here, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, Pretty like, and and she knows there's a prophecy that you know to kill her son, and how they're gonna make it in the game that she knew that mistletoe was actually dangerous. You know, I don't know why she doesn't just like take the arrow and be like, promise you won't kill my son, and then be like, okay, cool, fine, finally got the last one. Yeah, (laughs) I guess I guess that is like in service of the writing because despite despite having finished both current God of War games, current um, PS4 God of War games, I can say they're perfect, but Mm -hmm. there is like some conceits to the plot you need to make. Right in that, no, like, course, yeah. if if Freya was just like, "Hey, whoa, Mistletoe was gonna kill my son," thus setting off the events that would destroy the world or whatever, right? It's just yeah. like, well, then there's not a, really a video game. Well, it's just like, Kratos, okay, we'll be safe. Here's the thing, though: Kratos wouldn't have cared. Kratos would have been like, "Tell your son to leave me alone. I'm going to spread my wife's ashes." And Baldur would have kept chasing. Of course, him. yeah. So it's yeah. like um, that, that, that almost could have worked too. But I think making it the the twist or the reveal, and like, what's really cool is that or cool i don't know if this is cool maybe it's just cool for me but like it's, it's this is never revealed in the game <laughs> that she had like a yeah. promise from only mistletoe is the only thing that could harm balder well, like it turns out it was but you don't know the back you don't really learn the backstory behind it at all in the game wait like, wait till you get to point wait, like wait till you get to the end of norse mythology though and you find out mistletoe is really a christmas kissing thing the whole time it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 your son was destined to kiss, kiss my son throw away yeah. these arrows <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah in the, in the climactic final fight with balder Kratos is getting his shit kicked in. Uh, he's losing the fight against somebody who cannot be harmed, cannot be killed. Like and does not feel they, pain. Yeah, they're they're going they're going. Yeah, that's that's cannot be harmed. But uh, oh. they're going they're going blow for blow uh, for like so long. Is you're that... like on you're on the arm of a giant who's been like resurrected by Freya, and you're like throwing each other off of it and through stuff and getting crushed yeah. by things. Uh, but Baldur just keeps coming back, and Kratos like eventually starts to tire. You know, like he's he's start to lose. Uh, and so much so that he's like eventually like on his knees catching his breath and Atreus puts himself between the two. Balder, sure enough, swings a punch straight into Atreus's tress- chest, breaks the only arrow remaining and piercing his own hand, killing himself. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, wow. I did love that scene when an adult man sucker punches a, at the time, I think, 10-year-old boy in the chest <laughs> and he's just <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's great because there's like, this like splash of blood and Atreus is like, can't, doesn't have his breath he's like <gasps> he's trying to catch his breath to say yeah, not yeah. my blood and it's because it's Baldur's blood and then yeah, the, cam- the camera pans he's got it piercing his hand like yeah. oh yeah yeah oh, very good um so no matter how he dies Baldur, his death always means one thing uh another quote from mccoy to close us out immediately after Baldur is pierced by loki's spear or this mistletoe brooch the gods found themselves unable to speak as they trembled with anguish and fear they knew that this event was the first presage of Ragnarok, the downfall and death, not just of themselves, but of the very cosmos they maintained. And that's God of War 4. Baldur, the Freya, and the trickster yeah. god. Um, eventually I'll play the next game and I will do this again because these have been easily some of my favorite episodes ever to research. Um, if you guys like the show, consider You're leaving us. You're going to love it, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, oh. Like, oh. Wait, can I make a call out? I'll do the I wanted to go first after you. I want to. Okay. Yeah. If you guys like the show, consider leaving us a review or telling your friends. Jamie, what do you want to say? Um, I wanted to put a call to action for the listeners. If you guys like are listening through and you find like a really good isolated like thirty second to a minute clip of like a bit, because uh, I don't listen to our stuff, so it's hard for me to like find a timestamp. If you find a timestamp of like something that stands alone and you think is funny, please send in the timestamp to us. I'm looking to like make a couple reels or maybe throw in a, a TikTok or two just for for show engagement and stuff. And uh, it's hard to just find those those bits, and you guys will know them the best. So it's out of you, con- out of context quotes, but with context. Yeah, yeah. like like <laughs> make it so you don't really need to have a knowledge of the lore boys. Imagine a joke that would be funny to a friend who had never heard the show before. Because or that's a joke that's funny to your that. parents, right? Like the, yeah. the true normies. <laughs> yeah yeah or or, or just or Gen that's Z, true I mean. yeah something is true to the spirit of the show or anything like that yeah. um but anyways just if, if you'd send any of those to uh james then uh 
I can start putting those together and I'll give you a shout out if your thing is chosen. That's James at James.James. James. Uh, no, you can send it to James on Discord. There's a yep. link to our Discord server uh, in the description of this episode. So click that if you want to check it out. It's also discord.gg slash the lore boys for now. Or lore boys, just lore boys. Discord.gg slash lore boys for now. Yeah, as we, as almost as lost we, our, level... <laughs> we almost lost our boost today. So thank you to, I think Avocado Man came in with the clutch and then Darnell gave us a couple Darnell, more yeah, to Darnell make us real tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Thanks to everyone who's boosted the server so far. Uh, yep. Pete, what's going on with Instagram and or you? Uh, yeah, fun employed. Been great. Um, <laughs> uh, comic should be out this summer. I'm on track for the Montreal Comic Con um, at this point. Uh, Instagram, send us messages. Send us memes. Um, play God of War Ragnarok after listening to this episode because I have never had more difficulty in my life going... <laughs> in my, ever this episode you did a great job will imp- you did good improve yeah the, you did a great this, job. this episode will improve that game for you because you'll just be like hmm. just yeah. absolutely just like sweating bullets over the research these people have done. <laughs> very <laughs> but, cool but uh cool. yeah so it's at lore boys podcast on instagram at squared idea for my publisher um don't worry about the layoffs i'm doing great i'm not he's, gonna lie so dude he's doing just fine okay yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, if you want to support the show, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the lore boys, where you can get access to uh, bonus content once a week. Uh, this, like I said, at the top of the show, this was a, a, a poll decision to do this episode. So you can vote on future episodes if you want. Uh, there will also be bonus lore, like I said earlier, like what happens after after uh balder dies why don't they just go to go to hell and resurrect them? They're gods, right? Other gods have resurrected. Why not balder? Uh, I'll tell you why. It's, it's a funny story. Um, huh. <laughs> and those come out every thursday uh we also play uh games like the loser titles which might not be the most interesting game this week because people voted on it so you guys might know what it was but <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys forgot uh you guys you guys are small brain sometimes um and of course if you don't trust um the patreon we do uh have lord voice prime as always where we will be taking oaths from people to not <laughs> harm us, okay? We're trying to get oaths from every, every listener to not harm the right. war boys. And we're going to that. But they, <laughs> the, the last listener, I, I told that, they figured out the loophole that that pain is what the harm is. So they just filled me up with painkillers and then they could hit me all they would. And then I, okay. I wasn't harmed until that, the next day. That right. sounds like a win-win for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <yeah. laughs> Load me up, up and pain pain babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I've gotten I've gotten uh, oaths from pretty much everybody so far, except for uh, Bray, but he's harmless. I'm I'm sure he'll uh, never. I'm sure Bray will never do anything to come back and and kill me. I mean, that's not Bray. <laughs> Bray wouldn't. So you know, oaths I, from I, the oafs. Yeah. Exactly. Um, would like grab Bray by the backpack straps and get stabbed in the hand by a raw oh, piece of vegetable, give him a tummy ache. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, I'd be scared of Bray Stock. Imagine just like pitch black, you're in your bedroom, and now you hear the flick of a, a lizard's tongue smelling the room to where you are. You know, I mean, oh. it's not pitch black. You're you're in your house, and all the lights go out because he's an electrician. So, oh, that's true. <laughs> an electrician yeah. and a, a lizard wizard. Uh-oh. <laughs> an electric, a different an electric lizard wizard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. I think that would constitute a lore boys. Lore boys. Lore boys. Out. Oh. 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 Freya. 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 Freya.